Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome to episode 5 of Seasons at Oakfield Farm for FS19. I almost said FS17 once again, uh, but yes it is in fact a Farming Simulator 19. Uh, so yes, uh, it is another bright and beautiful morning. We have had a little bit of rain overnight and uh, yeah the fields are a little bit wet at the moment but uh, yeah, that's not going to concern us too much, uh, they should start to dry out. And, uh, yeah, we don't have a hell of a lot of work planned on them this morning. Uh, not entirely sure where my dog has gotten to. Uh, though perhaps a bowl of food will bring him out of hiding. Um, I hope he hasn't run away or something. Anyway, we have a couple of jobs to do this morning. And, uh, yeah, you might also be noticing that our bank balance is up quite a little bit. And that's, of course, because I spent yesterday evening selling off a little bit of grain from the silos. In fact, the silos are now empty as far as I'm aware. I hope they are anyway. They should be. Yeah, so everything has been uh, taken out of storage and sold off. And yeah, I might not have gotten the best price for most things. Um, but some things did have a pretty good price uh, at the same time. Uh, the reason, of course, I did that is because, of course, you know, today is uh, mid-spring, uh, the final day of mid-spring. Uh, we'll be into late spring soon enough. And yeah, I wanted to get a little bit of capital in because we are going to be purchasing some new equipment and hopefully dealing with that today. Uh, so yeah, I do have one load of corn uh, sitting in there. It's 59% uh, of a trailer. And I think we're going to be selling that down at Empire Stores, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 744, I think it was a little bit higher last night. Um, though admittedly it has been a week since I last booted up this safe file, so yeah, I might be off on that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get that taken care of uh, pretty soon. And before we deal with that, I might as well take a look at the cattle. And I actually think there are three of the Holsteins expecting a calf at the moment. So we've got one, two, yeah, so one, two, three... Yeah, three. So we've got three calves on the way, uh, which is not bad, uh, considering uh, we just bought the cattle in. Um, actually, we should probably take a look at their condition as well, uh, which is far more important. So yes, uh, cleanliness is 50% and they are lacking water. I think we're going to let the power food slip for now, or the total mixed ration. Uh, having a look down here... We can see the total mix ration has a 100% effectiveness. Uh, silage is 75 and grass is 60. Now, we are getting a little bit of grass in and that should hopefully increase as time goes along. So yeah, I'm willing to let that slide just a little bit for now. Their health meter is obviously going to be a good indicator of this as well. Uh, so yeah, for now they are healthy and yeah, I think you know we'll just keep the hay and silage topped up and perhaps they will go out and start grazing a little bit more. Anyway, time to get these animals fed and watered, or at least watered. And uh, we're going to clean out their feeding area as well because, you know, they have... Uh, Obviously spilled a little bit of stuff in there overnight. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get this tipped in here. And we can pretty much pull ourselves out. It is a tiny amount of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. But hey, we do only have a small number of cattle. And it is really offset by the amount of water that these animals need. And I may end up actually installing the pump at some stage. Uh before the summer because yeah keeping on top of water is yeah it's going to be something that we really need to do uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hook on to our milk container which is uh, currently being used to bring water up and down to the cows and yeah as you can see I have just dumped both tankers here uh, in a bid to try and bring enough water into them I think there's still a little bit left in the jawskin uh, but I'm going to fill up on this first and see if we can get it emptied into there. And yeah, the animal work can at times be a little bit repetitive. But it's a case that, you know, I've spent a lot of time uh, doing field work uh, over the past couple of episodes. And, you know, people do like to see a little bit of the animal work too. So uh, it's worth including it. Uh, so let's see if I can back myself around here and get ourselves into the trigger. Nope. 
Yeah, I failed completely with that. Uh, yeah, once again, articulated trailers are not really my thing. Uh, so let's see if we can pull close enough coming from this side. There we go. Close enough is good enough. And yeah, we're going to let that drain in and see how much they take. And yes, their cleanliness has come up. It does take a little bit of time to register. And yeah, their water is also getting filled in. Um... And I notice that there are no brown cows now. Uh, a couple of times when I have spawned in the... Has that cow sunk beneath the ground or is its, le or its legs just incredibly short? Uh, it's something just looks wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, so from time to time, uh, as I come into the field, uh, a lot of the black gets replaced with brown. And it's a case that yeah, I end up with a field of brown cows and also some black uh, some white and brown cows which is a little bit unusual and yeah they also seem to be a little bit cleaner they're often covered with muck uh when i come in um so yeah it's a little bit unusual some of the textures are uh, not behaving as they should um, but yeah it's a case that i'm not overly worried about that once the animals you know kind of behave themselves and you know don't end up dying on us or anything like that uh, so a quick look again. Yeah, interestingly, speaking of animals dying, eh, there is no total number any no anymore. I notice, uh, which is a little bit unusual. You kind of have to count the cattle individually to make sure they're all there or something. Um, yeah, though I'm sure we get a notification if any of our animals actually die. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit unusual that we don't have a total head count anyway uh yeah cleanliness is fine water is pretty much fine i may actually see um if there is another little drop in the joskin and we can drop that into them as well yeah and they've taken quite a bit of that as well uh so yeah that should keep them uh, going for now. Uh, may actually take a look at the grass growth just to see what it's up to at this stage growth is at 67 percent and crop moisture is at 31 percent uh, which is understandable after the night's rain and yeah soil moisture is at 19 percent which is just a little bit less than saturated uh, yes interestingly uh, during the break i did have another look through at field number one uh, because of course it is and has our field sprouted? I think it might have. Yeah, and we've got a little bit of germination failure uh, out on field number two, which is a little bit sad, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, the main point I did want to talk about, of course, was why we have second stage fertilization on field number one. And that is, of course, because the last farmer that had field number one left it fallow. So it has had a season with nothing growing on it. And that's what has happened there. Uh, it may also uh, explain why we have had, you know, some patchy germination here and there on field number two, uh, because last year it was uh, planted with a cereal crop. And yeah, we've gone for a cereal crop again. Uh, so yeah, it may be a case that we will go up and check out these fields this morning and perhaps, or this afternoon maybe, and uh, perhaps spray out some fertilizer uh, just to give them a little bit of a boost. Uh, it's something you want to really keep on top of uh, because if it goes too far, as far as I'm aware, and I did have this trouble uh, on the Ballymoon map, if you remember, uh, with the biofuel willow field uh, where I was too late coming in for fertilization and uh, yeah fertilization just wouldn't accept on the field even though you could still uh, quite happily spray it out uh, so yeah it's a case that I want to keep on top of fertilization because it will only take in the earliest growing stages okay so time to yeah we might as well actually drop the John Deere here I'm gonna drop jump into the case and we're going to head down to emerald stores uh let me just double check that ah yes empire stores uh it's offering a 774 uh for the corn i'm assuming that's about a thousand liters or something uh so yeah we should get a fairly decent price out of this um so yeah gonna take this down and get it sold off 
so yes, £9,679, which is fantastic. And so, back in the yard, it's time to find somewhere to ditch this trailer. And I think for now, because, you know, we're not actually... Although, yeah, I do tend to use this area to turn around quite a bit. So, I may just back it in uh, into this little overhang area here. Uh, as it turns out, this is actually a beet store or a potato store or something like that, I think. Uh, I, I'm sure you could pile grain on the floor as well. Uh, but yeah, that does explain its really rather unusual interior, uh, which had me puzzled for a little while. I was wondering if it was a silage pit or something like that. But yeah, this is a grain store, beet store, potato store, uh, where, you know, with a concrete floor where stuff just basically gets piled up. So yeah, kind of nice to have that on the map. And it may be a case that we end up getting into potatoes at some stage. Uh, but for now, we have a contract to complete. And I think I'd rather get the contract done before I go purchasing any equipment, just so that we have a little bit of extra money on hand. And there we go. I hope that's enough. I mean, we do have some more uh, on the farm if we need it but uh, yeah that's also a very convenient way of getting that trailer unloaded uh, which I think for the meantime I'm going to end up storing in here uh, just beside our fertilizer so field number 27 uh, let's take a look at the map and see where that is okay that's over here I think we're gonna head up uh, by the stables and Oakland farm uh, which is of course the pig farm and the chicken farm and uh, yeah we'll head up the road here and uh, get in there and see if we can access the field from that side and hopefully we can I think we may have caught sight of our quarry at long last uh, yeah that looks like it up the end there uh, so let's see if we can find a gateway into this thing um, yeah, we're really up at the limit of the map, and it has been quite a long drive down. Uh, though our own field is still visible across the hillside there. And uh, yeah, this looks like the entrance that we have been searching for. Uh, so yeah, almost the two furthest points on the map, east to west. Uh, and yeah it actually looks like we could have accessed it from that field track as well uh, which is interesting yeah not entirely sure if I'm gonna have enough seed uh, to deal with this so it may be a case that I'll have to run the John Deere up here at some point um, I think this is a contract I'm going to end up doing myself as I say I want to try and hold on to as much money as I can today uh, so worker is going to be kept to an absolute bare minimum until the equipment is purchased and actually before I go off sewing I'll just double check that it is old team on so yes and so it's time to put the pedal down hit cruise control and uh, yeah we're gonna leave our eyes open this time I think uh, so yeah any moment now we should be getting a contract complete uh, I don't think there's any need to use the ridge marker on this pass because yeah we can see where they are and yeah I've got to say the ridge markers are an invaluable tool something that I don't use often enough uh, but recently I have found myself getting into them more and more uh, and of course that is the contract complete and yeah I mean we could do this extra little pass here but I mean hey we should hold on to that 29% of seed uh, that we have left in the tank uh, so yes we're gonna complete that and uh, we've got another contract here 6412 for field 17 oh yeah field 17 was the field that we uh, took care of yesterday do I think I can do it for that price probably not liquid fertilizer is ridiculously expensive uh, though I think the pelleted stuff might be a little cheaper uh, we do have a sprayer and yeah, I think that's a contract we're gonna let slide for now and uh, Seven Springs pub uh, Deborah Joseph is looking for something to be transported uh, from the pub to hilltop stores but that's actually a contract I may take because I haven't done a lot of these contracts and as far, uh, hilltop stores is of course the store uh, that is just up the hill as it were uh, from our farms 
and so yeah the pub should be up along here somewhere if I'm not mistaken uh, perhaps it's in one of these buildings here uh, there does seem to be a large car park there uh, so I think we're gonna pull in and have a look uh, see if we can find our pallet oh and there we go uh, it seems that we are in the right place and that looks like uh, a pallet of some luggage or something uh, which is uh, yeah I mean that's a little bit unusual uh, thankfully it is only one pallet and uh, I didn't need a trailer uh, to get this transported uh, so yes this is hilltop stores uh, not entirely sure where we drop it do we drop it here maybe transport finished excellent and uh, yeah we can go into the contracting system and uh, complete that contract and the only other available contract is for field 17 fertilizing and yeah that's not really something that I am interested in okay so uh, yes equipment uh, so we are going to be needing a couple of bits um, so the most critical one of course is going to be a baler and the convenience of having the coon is that you're not making two passes over the field you can bail and wrap in one go and yeah I mean we are dealing with larger fields on this map so it's a case that yeah uh, we do have more than enough space and I think we should have more than enough horsepower uh, to power this thing as well so yeah it's a case that we are going to be purchasing a brand new baler uh, which leaves us with 38,000, almost 39,000 uh, pounds. And we still need to get hold of a wind roar. And as it turns out, the wind roar I am looking for is a little bit expensive uh, because I would like to go for a slightly larger working with. Let's actually take a look and see uh, where we are with loans at the moment. Uh, so we're going to finances and uh, yeah we're 140 in the hole uh, let's see if we can extend that a little uh, yeah so 73 which puts us at 175,000 behind uh, but it would be worth it to get this equipment uh, so yeah another 62,000 for a wind roar uh, okie doke and I think finally we are actually going to see about a front moor yeah the the speed bonus that we're going to get from having an extra moor on the front of the tractor is really going to help uh, so we are in fact going to purchase that outright as well uh, so yeah a lot of money has been spent today uh, so our total uh, equipment bill today is a hundred and fifty eight thousand uh, pounds which leaves us uh, in debt to the tune of two hundred thousand uh, so yeah it's going to be a little bit scary trying to get that paid off I would like to get it paid off as quickly as possible and uh, yeah taking a peek outside the window it does look as though that rain has arrived and I also seem to have left the shed open uh, so if I can uh, contain my excitement and not get hung up on the doors I should be able to go in and uh, get out there and get this door closed up uh, I do have an awful habit of leaving a shed doors wide open uh, so yeah I think we may grab uh, a tractor on follow me and uh, head down to the shop and get that equipment picked up uh, before it starts to get you know too wet or anything like that uh, we would like to keep it in the shed if at all possible and I have absolutely no idea where I parked the case uh, so uh, may take the famous worker off follow me for a moment uh, while I try to find somewhere to store all of this equipment and I'm actually thinking uh, straight off the top of my head that some of those storage sheds uh, down the back there might have been uh, not a bad idea though I think for now we can actually pop the wind roar in here 
uh, just out of harm's way. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty decent. Uh, a nice piece of equipment and one that I uh, actually enjoy using. I mean, there are, you know, the smaller ones and we could have gone for now those uh, for this season. But uh, yeah, we might as well go for the slightly larger equipment uh, since we are dealing with slightly larger fields. And so uh, we may as well dump uh, this more in here or at least try to anyway uh, as for the baler uh, will we bring it down into the same area and yeah I think for now uh, down here at the back of the firm is as good a place as any to park it um, so Friday is looking to be a little bit better of a day a little bit cloudy and uh, not yeah there's going to be reasonable drawing potential uh, that's probably down to the wind speed uh, particularly or oh, late in the in the night uh, why they're giving wind speed in meters per second I am not entirely sure kilometers per hour would be a little bit easier and a little bit more obvious uh, to understand um, so yeah I think uh, with the rain pouring down like this I think we're gonna have an early finish I mean we have taken care of the cattle uh, we've spent quite a bit of money on getting the new equipment back up to the firm and yeah, I mean though our plants have technically germinated uh, spraying them in the rain uh, is not going to be the thing to do uh, contracts are still looking a little bit thin on the ground so yeah I think that is actually uh, where I am going to end today's episode uh, which has obviously been a slightly shorter episode than usual but but spring it seems is going to be a little bit like that for us uh, until things get up and running and uh, yeah so with that I think that I am going to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in uh, you have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube and I will see you next time